Our city is taking you for a ride. Transport for Greater Manchester in partnership with Manchester City Council are making bus travel across the city more profitable whilst travelling remains frustratingly slow. Oxford Road is one of the most dangerous transport corridors in Manchester whilst being home to some of the worst health and air quality in the country. It's also one of the most congested public transport routes in Europe and a neglected cycle route for many people. However, we don't want to meaningfully address these issues nor make cycling safe for all ages. After a public consultation that allows us to pretend we have listened, the plans are mostly unchanged. This video highlights how we have embezzled sustainability and cycle funding to make sure freedom of movement is pushed back another 20 years. We start the new cycling infrastructure as we mean to continue. Riders travelling north will be squeezed to the curb and given no protection from drivers turning left across their path. You may ask, even if this infrastructure was decent, what comes before? Frankly, that's not our problem and we don't care. We market this concept of disconnection as the cycling oasis. The paint offers no protection from heavy bus traffic less than an arm's length away. Novice riders may be lulled into a false sense of security. We actually predict that experienced riders will not bother with this substandard infrastructure leading to animosity from bus drivers who have a habit of thinking they own the road and cycling should happen elsewhere or preferably not at all. The cycleway crosses over the footway which will lead to conflicts with people walking because there isn't a meeting face to face but face to rear. Only six or seven riders having to stop would block the exit from Moss Lane, leaving people vulnerable. People joining Oxford Road from Moss Lane are likely to take this shortcut rather than the nonsensical planned route. This design encourages pavement cycling, but that's okay because another Operation Grimaldi or Operation Considerate will be used to persecute cycling with disproportionately high fines. For people cycling south, there is no protected space and riders are dumped out into a painted gutter. You will note that this area has extremely large pavements so there is really no excuse for inadequate protection. We expect a great deal of red light jumping here because cycle traffic could proceed south ignoring the traffic lights without conflict. A cycle bypass could be provided but cycling is deprioritized. This again will of course allow us to persecute cycling via fines. Most notable is how despite the generous street width there is no protection on the junction for southbound cycling. Once across, the lane narrows to a collision point and bus drivers will squeeze the more vulnerable to the curb. To leave Oxford Road, we have designed a conflict zone with inefficient toucan crossings where the pavement is mounted and dismounted several times. Of course, this is all wasted money because the likely behaviour is people choosing direct paths. Likewise, joining Oxford Road is the reverse of the previous convoluted nonsense. Again, people are likely to improvise a direct route where road designers have deliberately marginalised cycling. The new scheme throughout suffers cycling appendicitis, where the sustainability funding will be wasted on peripheral infrastructure with little to no known function. An innovation is the bus stop bypass, which in theory could give people protected routes instead of having to overtake vehicles. These will not be used on all stops, so tough if you don't want your children cycling in front of buses. You need to learn to share. This is how dedicated we are to marginalising all but motor traffic. The heart of the university will be turned into a four-lane bus station, with capacity for 12 double-deckers. The whole development of less than a mile will have parking for over 40. And this is all part of the plan to make Oxford Road an extended bus depot. Who knows, possible refuelling points may be a long-term provision. At the junction of Grafton Street, all pretense of protected space will be abandoned. Southbound is vulnerable to the left hook, northbound is just paint and a conflict zone as this will be used by drivers wanting to undertake vehicles waiting to turn right. This poor design will also see more red light jumping because cycling can proceed north without conflict. Despite room enough for six lanes of motor traffic in parts, Cycle paths will only have 30 cm curbs or plastic armadillos of the same size for an illusion of separation. 
Dover Street Junction will suffer the same red light jumping because ignoring them northbound is completely safe. In our marketing, we like to use the phrase Dutch style, but almost none of the development meets current Dutch standards. Coming closest though, might be the Dutch courage those cycling will need to mix with heavy traffic. At Oxford Road and Booth Street, the most hazardous junction so far dealing with a complex of six lanes of motor traffic, no provision for cycling will be built. Moving along, we see a mess of poorly connected infrastructure, with more paint and armadillos. The latter have been demanded by the haulage industry in a letter to Parliament, because they allow dangerous HGVs to park in the cycle lanes. At Charles Street, we will give buses full priority and provide no space for cycling, not even a hint. Normal motoring traffic has also been reintroduced to add to the danger. The last section is what we are most proud of. People cycling south will have another painted gutter, encouraging them into any opening doors from the parked cars, which design kills or injures 600 people a year. Cycle campaigners still think we do this by accident. Cleverly hidden in the video by a bus is where the northbound cycle lane just ends into the back of a bus, meaning riders will be having to move out in front of overtaking buses, then cutting back in. The cycle infrastructure ends how it started. What happens after this is not our problem.